what's up guys so we are going to go check on the garden today there is a heat advisory um out it's from 11 a.m to 7 p.m it's supposed to feel like over 100 degrees with the humidity so we are oh my goodness it got cloudy <laughs> that's the first time that's happened so we are going to check oh my goodness on the garden that's crazy i'm not planning on staying out here but i wanted to see and check on how everything's doing make sure i get my containers watered and some beds seems like it's going to be a long <laughs> few minutes out here my camera keeps fogging up so I told you guys that this is the bed that my friend's daughter had planted out with corn and I already see corn shoots popping up and my sweet potato slips that I planted in here have popped back to life. Still have to plant the other side of the bed. These pole beans have reached the top of this trellis so fast and so good and I just realized we have our first pole beans ready in here. So that's really exciting. So I get a lot of questions on what watering system that we have and if we have one. And the answer to that always is we do not have one. I use um, our holes and I do have a sprinkler set up um, sometimes on the end of my holes. But then um, other times I just, um, it's not sprinkling into like when it's going around, it sprinkles the pathways and stuff. And I really just want it to uh, water the garden beds and so, for that, I take my hose, which I will show you right now, and I sit it in the center of a bed, and depending on how big the bed is, I leave it in there for about 30 minutes or, um, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So this is the end of our hose right here, and I just sit it in at the base. We already had it sitting. Um, my son had already turned it on over here, so it watered like this side of the the garden uh, bed and so now I put it down here so that it could get this side of the bed. All of these weeds. Weeds, 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 weeds. I still haven't finished pruning the back half of these plants but I definitely need to get in here and tie these up so maybe I'll go run and get some tape while I'm waiting on that um, hose. What my daughters are doing is taking out the brassicas in that bed that I still had there. We're gonna feed them to our chickens. This weed in here is like, you would think it's a plant and it's not. It's literally like taking over. Insane. Okay guys, so it is the next day. I spent a lot of time out here yesterday without the camera, just uh, pruning the tomatoes that I showed you guys earlier, as well as tying some up. And <laughs> my camera's getting cloudy. As well as tying some up. And then I also found two more, what are they called? Tomato hornworms. And you'll be so proud of me. I pulled them off myself with snippers and killed them and um i also found though interesting i found what is it called i think they were called army what were they i looked it up because i've never seen them they're like little worms on my tomato plants that look like cabbage worms but um that you would find on cabbages except for they were on my tomatoes and i've never seen that before and so it's so hot out here yesterday at 12 o'clock it said it was 100 and with the heat index and the humidity it felt like 115 degrees the sun isn't even out it's just the humidity and it's ridiculous so you can see right here is where i found the uh what is it called the tomato hornworm right here but then a lot of these leaves that had holes when I turned them around I saw that they were worms so let me see if I can find one for you so I didn't find the worm that I was talking about but I did find another 
hornworm right there because I just saw that this was these leaves were taken and I followed and there it is but like down here there's a bunch of holes in these plants and um, I'm sure if I reached my hand in there which I'm not there would be lots of, lots of uh, worms so I am completely missing a cabbage worm somewhere in here between these two plants because this one did not have um, those tomatoes weren't eaten yesterday and now they are and I did catch one small one over here so I have to look and see if I find a bigger one because it also goes into the second plant right here these will be my first ripe tomatoes but there is a spot right there you can see it where there's damage and so I was look yep and like that one has damage and I found a small one but there has to be some big ones on this plant see look at it I just knocked that one off of this plant that I showed you guys right here and I did it all by myself I don't think I've ever showed you guys this, but when we moved on to the property, it had two fig trees. One died, but this one, very close to this uh, shed, is still very much alive. And it has lots of figs on it. So that should be very uh, interesting when they get ripe. Okay, so I am actually back inside. This is what I planned on doing with my day today. It is already almost four o'clock, and so I was busy doing homework all morning, but it was just too hot to go outside. It was still hot when I just went outside for a second. So um, I am actually going to be canning. I, on my last grocery haul, bought um, some chicken breast and from Aldi, it was on clearance, I think, or like Markdown. And I also bought some ground beef from Costco because I canned ground beef and chicken for the first time a couple months ago, maybe. And I've actually loved it. I loved having the ground beef for quick spaghetti dinners or any dinner that calls for ground beef. And I am running low. I think I have maybe one or two. So I bought the beef from um, Costco in order to, to replace that beef. I think altogether it got like maybe 12 or 13 pounds. It's estimated that about a pound goes in each jar. So how many ever pounds I have, that's how many jars I'm planning on canning. If I have anything above 12 jars, because I think that's how many jars I have of the wide mouth of the wide mouth. I'll just use for tonight for dinner. The chicken I have right here sitting, I think it was maybe 10 pounds. And so again, one pound per jar estimated. And I'd like that to make, I've made chicken salad with that. Um, it's actually the only thing I've made with that is like chicken salad. Oh no, I used it in Alfredo before. And so it's just a really two good things to have on hand. This will be my second time canning it. And so that's why I'm using store-bought beef instead of like my butcher box ground beef or chicken or anything like that because I'm still practicing and learning and it's much easier to buy um, beef that is on sale or anything like that and that's cheaper than messing up with more expensive cut of beef or chicken. So enough talking. I am actually, the first thing I'm gonna do, so these are frozen and I actually have, I thought I had more boneless chicken breast, but this is actually only five pounds of um, chicken. And so I'm going to have my girls cut them up into cubes and then we'll fill five jars of that. And then I'm gonna start browning the beef on the stove and we'll go from there. So the canner that I have is just a canner from Walmart. It was $79. And so I need 12 cups of liquid in here, which is three of these jars. So this is not like a tutorial video or anything like that. I'm just showing you what I have going on in the kitchen, what I'm doing on this hot day. I know the last video where I was inside, it was a rainy day, but this is also something good to do when it's just too hot to go outside. And this week has definitely been one of those, uh, not one of those, this week has been all of those days 
where it's just too hot to go outside where the heat advisory and the heat index is just too high. I think at one point I looked and the humidity was like 99% um, and then it went down to like 64. And it's also the time where, you know, uh, vegetable plants get sick. I did see that my cucumbers, um, I think it was my, it was my Armenian, it was my Chinese snake. Um, the leaves were getting um, fungus on them. It was just so hot outside and it's that time of year where it rains or sprinkles at least one part of the day. So it could just be like a thunderstorm and it rains for like five minutes. And so applying like those like DE where if it gets wet, it's ineffective for bugs and then you have to start all over or if you even apply like BT and stuff like that. After like heavy rains and stuff like that, you have to reapply it. So that's something I've always struggled with, with applying those pesticides and stuff is just like trying to find the perfect time like because when I actually need it is the time where it's actually, you know, raining or um, at least one time per day or sprinkling or just so humid that it feels like rain. So I will be succession sowing all of those things again. Um, because we do have a long growing season here. I think our first estimated frost isn't probably till, I think last year was November 2nd, but it didn't frost until maybe the second week of November. And so with this beef, I'm just browning it. I'm not gonna brown it all the way because once I put it inside of its containers, I will add salt and water and then it will cook in the pressure canner and that will cook it some more. I'm really just trying to get it somewhat uh, cooked. I know I've heard like a lot of people say that they didn't like the consistency of their uh, ground beef when they after they canned it, but I haven't had um, an issue with it, and so I'm gonna do it again. My girls are cutting up the um, what's it called? the chicken. Tomorrow we're going to actually be butchering our meat chickens. Um, this will be our first time butchering our meat chickens. The first time we butchered chickens, it was extra root boosters. So my son's just gathering the things that we need for, um, for butchering tomorrow. And my husband's outside finishing building our um, the shelter for our male goats. So I'm gonna fill my jars and I have this slotted spoon so I don't get a lot of the oil in it. And I'm going to fill to about the rim right there and then fill the rest with water and then add in a half a teaspoon of salt in each jar. Okay, I got my first batch of ground beef sitting inside the pressure. I'm waiting for it to start. Uh, shaking so I could put my timer on. I have my other beef that couldn't fit in the canner so I'll have to do two rounds of beef and then maybe one round of the chicken. It's about to start moving so I could put my timer on. It's right here this little piece and I'll put my timer on. It's for 75 minutes which is the hour and 15 minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm so happy that I was able to do this and get this done. I don't really like being in the kitchen uh, when I feel like I want to be in the garden, but it's definitely too hot to be outside. Um, so I probably won't go out there until 7 o'clock, but by this time, um, I'm going to end this video right here and then head out there later today, finish tying up my tomatoes, finish pruning them, and then get ready for butchering chickens tomorrow morning. So. I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.